Warning, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome, everyone. My name is Tracy Fitzpatrick, and I'll be your moderator today. Thank you so much for joining us here at Netcom Learning, a market leader in promoting lifelong learning, training, and talent development solutions. We are very excited to host today's technical webinar, 10 New Features in the Windows 10 Creators Update. Presenting today's topic is Dan Ray. Dan has worked at Microsoft for 11 years and has seen how Microsoft's data centers grew from under 50 to well over 100 physical locations. You'll learn about how Microsoft hosts global services like Office 365, Xbox Live, Minecraft, Skype, Microsoft Azure, and most recently, LinkedIn. Now, please bear in mind that this is an overview of a very robust topic. We offer a collection of technical and business courses that can be tailored towards your specific requirements. If you are interested in further discussion, you can make an appointment with our learning consultants through our website at netconlearning.com. Today's session is also being recorded, so you'll get free access to the recording in the next 24 hours via email. Netcom Learning helps build innovative learning organizations in the workplace by structuring a smarter workforce, supporting changes, and driving growth. We offer over 2,000 IT, business, and soft skills courses available to organizations around the world, encompassing technologies like big data, cloud, and mobility. Since 1998, we have been empowering organizations with our managed learning services to reach optimal performance results and address challenges. So, why should you attend this webinar? Microsoft has redefined computing with the recent creator's updates on Windows 10. What you get after an update interface is a complete, amazing operating system that is both smart and intelligent. With features like night lighting, night light sensing, paint 3D, dynamic lock, edge enhancement, and an enhanced game mode, your personalized Windows 10 knows just where to tickle you to keep you smiling. And now I'd like to give you a quick overview of the logistics before we get started. To start with, you do have the option to adjust the window size to your liking. Simply hit the escape key and find the zoom button on the top left corner of your GoToWebinar viewer. Everyone has been muted except for our presenters. Please feel free to submit any questions you have for the presenters here in the questions pane and we will address them at the end of the session. A PDF copy of today's slides are also in the handout section of the GoToWebinar viewer. And now I'm going to hand it over to Dan who will be presenting today's topic. Dan, go ahead. You've got it. Thanks, Tracy. Again, my name is Dan Ray, and this is a top 10 list of things to be aware of, either in the creator's update that was released or things that are coming up in the fall creator's update. And if you weren't already aware of it, Windows 10 has already surpassed some of the goals set by Microsoft and others were in the process of meeting, we're over a half a billion users of uh, Windows 10 at this point, 50 or 500 million active devices are running Windows 10 now. And most enterprise customers are either in pilots or they're actively deploying Windows 10. And then the growth tra trajectory compared to Windows 7 is expected to be much larger with Windows 10 than it was with Windows 7. Here are 10 of the things that you can expect with the creators update that have changed. The first is Microsoft's release info and cadence for Windows 10. This is linked to the page that carries the Windows 10 release information. And if I look at this, I can see that versions of Windows 10 have been renamed to either current branch or current branch for business. And as new releases come out, the previous release moves in and is typically promoted to the next step. So we can see now current branch for Windows 10 is the creator's update that was released in the spring. The version is the year 
followed by the month that it was finalized. So 1703 indicates a March 2017 release, and they have other information about the availability date. You can see that even though it was completed in March, it was made available in April. Current branch for business, down a little further, is 1607, and it was released in November of 2016, or actually made available as a current branch for business in that time frame. 1607 itself, a, a version finalized in July of 2016, was made available for users as a current branch in August of 2016. So you can see that typically there's about a month difference between the version number that's declared and the actual availability date. What this probably means for the fall creators update is the version will likely lock as 1709 being finalized sometime in September and then its availability date will be in mid-October. So that's the first thing, is just the difference in the release cadence for Windows 10. There is also information about how Windows and Office are aligning future releases. And then also the differences within naming. You'll see that there's a semi-annual channel that has been announced. So these will be every six months or so in a semi-annual channel. And they've renamed the long-term servicing branch to long-term servicing channel. There is a version of Windows 10 for devices that might be running on a manufacturing floor or that, uh, that need to be set to a particular version of Windows 10 and not changing as frequently, long-term servicing channel is the version of Windows 10 that is available for those types of systems. The next of 10 features is OneDrive Files On Demand. And what this allows you to do is instead of just seeing part of your OneDrive, you can now see the entire OneDrive so I'm going to go down here to my notification area and open my corporate Office 365 files. And you can see the file structures and the files that I have within here. If I have a file that I want to get a permanent copy of, I can do so by synchronizing or just by leveraging the fact that I've opened the file and that's the idea of files on demand. If I needed a screenshot of Mac computers running the Office applications, just by opening it, you can see that it just downloaded the file on demand. And then again, the file itself indicates differently that it's been downloaded and it's available offline now. I can also control these settings within the OneDrive app. The new app allows me to decide what's happening from a sync perspective. And what this allows me to do is see again, all of my files that are stored in cloud storage, but instead of having to selectively decide which folders and file structures are local, it only does that on demand. And again, on devices that might have a smaller amount of disk space than a full desktop or a laptop with a robust large storage device attached, I can do this and just get the files as needed or as requested. That's OneDrive files on demand. Again, your PDF has screenshots of all these for you to reference later. We talked a little bit about the release info changes and Microsoft on September 1st did announce the actual date for the fall creators release. The fall creators release will be available on October 17th. 
So we're just under a month at this point before that next large, or sorry, smaller incremental change comes to Windows 10. And October 17th just happens to be a Tuesday. So the change will roll out again in phases. It won't upgrade half a billion computers on October 17th. But as an IT professional, if you're somebody that's trying to get a feel for what's happening with the creators update, you'll be able to get the finalized code on Tuesday, October 17th. If you have interest in looking at what's coming or previewing that build, you can actually do so within the settings of Windows 10. So I can go to all Windows settings, update and security, and set my system so that I can actually see some of these builds as they're being created. Here is that press release on the Fall Creators Update release date, which again is Tuesday, October 17th. The next step goes into a little detail of the Windows Insiders program, the ability to move to these milestones or through these milestones ahead of users. So maybe I'm an IT pro or I'm somebody that needs to become familiar with OneDrive files on demand and other changes that are coming this fall. I can go to Update and Security, down to the Windows Insider program, and this is where I can control what I'm seeing from a standpoint of Windows 10 development. I can decide whether I'm in the fast or slow ring. And the difference there is the slow ring are going to be milestones that come to you once they've been tested by people like me that are out on the fast ring. So the fast ring changes come more often. Slow ring changes, once they've gone through fast ring participants and have been validated, get promoted to the slow ring. And my other choice is to take a look at active deployment of Windows. So this fast ring active deployment of Windows are the builds that are going towards or working towards that milestone on October 17th of the fall creators update. If at some point I want to actually see what's coming for the next biannual update, I can skip ahead to the next Windows release. Those are all options within the Windows Insider program. So that's a explanation of flash, fast ring, slow ring, and the skip ahead that is available for Windows Insiders. Windows Insiders as a program is available for free. You just sign up and agree that you would like to see these milestones ahead of them being released to the general public. The current advice is maybe to use a secondary machine or a, a develop, development machine, a non-production machine, because again, you're getting out a little ahead of the public, but you do have choice about how quickly you move ahead. Slow ring would be less intrusive in the updates that come to your computer than the fast ring. Skip ahead would put you out ahead of even a finalized build, potentially. One of the other areas that has changed and will change for the fall creators update is Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection has gone into a public preview. And Windows Defender has gone through quite a few changes with the creator's update. This was made public a little earlier in September that you can now take a look at the advanced threat protection in a public preview form. Start menu or down here in my notification area it's the shield here, and that takes me to my Windows Defender Security Center. There are huge investments from a standpoint of protecting Windows 10 devices 
made in this security center. And it allows me to take a look at my firewall settings. Right now I'm attached to a public network, but the firewall is protecting my device. I can look for app and browser control and control what's happening from a standpoint of my notifications in the browser and when I'm using different types of applications. I also have family controls available. So if I have children using the same device, maybe it's a home device running Windows 10, I have the ability to decide what types of options those children have from a standpoint of their online time and what's happening with the devices they're using. Another thing that is coming with Windows 10 and the Creators Update is a rename of the Photos application to something called Story Remix. This is one of those applications that I've not seen within my version of the Windows 10 update, even within the fast ring, but this is coming as something that will be included in the fall creators update. One of the ways that I can tell what version of Windows I'm running is by running a command called winver, win V-E-R. And here's where I know that 1709 is the planned version number of the creators update. I fairly recently received build number 16288.1. And the version tells me instead of 1703 that I'm running a version of 1709 on my workstation. Story mix, however, story remix, however, I have not seen in a build personally. I've just read about it on the internet. This is a really neat feature that involves a phone that can be running either iOS or Android, and it allows you to transfer the context of something you're running on that phone directly into Windows 10. I've decided to take a couple screenshots of what this looks like to share with you. To set this up, you go into all settings on Windows 10, and one of the main items that you'll have is setting up and linking your Android or your iPhone. You can see here, I have an iPhone that has been set up and linked to my account. And as part of setting that up, it sends you a text that allows you to test this feature of Windows 10, which is called pick up where you left off. So you install this app, it comes from the app store. And then when you are using a web page, you'll have an additional item on that web page that allows you to continue it on the PC. You can see here that I have a My Netcom page open. I click on Continue on PC from my phone's items, and that allows me to continue on the PC. Right now, I'm gonna try this to show you what happens if you immediately choose to continue on PC. I'm on a Twitter page, and I'm telling from my phone Continue that immediately on my PC. Resume browsing down here, opens up my Twitter page, which is still D-R-E-Y. So it's as easy as that to continue or pick up where you left off on a different device. You can either do it immediately or you can do it at your own pace later and pick up where you left off in different applications. That's the capabilities, like picking up where you left off in say an office document are planned for the creator's update.
Dynamic lock is another feature. This one was actually introduced in the creators update this spring. So if you have version 1703 on your computer, you should be able to set up dynamic lock. This is a feature that I loved working with because inevitably I will leave a workstation and occasionally I forget to lock the workstation before I leave. What this setting allows you to do is if your phone is paired with Windows 10, it allows your phone's proximity through Bluetooth to be what decides if you are still at your computer or not. So by setting up dynamic lock, as long as I leave with my iPhone to go to another meeting or to a different room, different area of a building, my computer automatically locks when my phone is outside of Bluetooth range. So it's not just when you get up from your desk, but if you leave a room or you go to a different area, as long as Bluetooth has broken that barrier, your computer will immediately lock and go to the lock screen. One of the other areas of investment in the creators update is the use and the inclusion of both 3D capabilities and 3D tools within Windows 10. In the spring update, Windows 10 introduced the Paint 3D program as well as Microsoft Paint. And this made some news because Microsoft originally said the Paint program, MS Paint, which I have been using for longer than I care to admit publicly, MS Paint was originally set to go away and Paint 3D would be its replacement. There was enough feedback of the need for Paint, MS Paint, that Microsoft has now confirmed MS Paint will stick around but Paint 3D was introduced as another option. I'm on a tablet here, so if I want to do a quick just drawing of something, an oval or maybe a geometric shape, I can do so on my screen. But one of the things here at the top that was introduced in Paint 3D is the ability to actually take those geometric shapes and perfectly set those up on a device and then rotate them within 3D space. So I can actually look at the size of this object and its rotation with these tools. And then if I go back to something like a spray can and a different color, I am now actually working with this object in 3D. So I can actually spray on a 3D object. And then as I rotate that object, you can see that the paint is where I placed it in 3D space. Paint 3D is joined by a View 3D application in the Fall Creators Update. So in the same way that I was able to create a 3D object here in Paint 3D, View 3D will give me the ability to actually view 3D models, either that I've created or that others have created. And then we'll also have a remix capability coming with the Fall Creators update. There are a number of other features coming to the Fall Creators update. And some of these are small enhancements and others might be specific to certain scenarios. 
that you might use a tablet computer, for instance, or when you're presenting to a secondary monitor, even if you have a touch device. We'll look at some of these now. I am on a Surface Pro 3 device. And if I swipe out from the left or sorry, right edge of the screen onto the screen, that brings up my area here to control the settings of the computer. I can also do this without a touch device by looking at notifications down here in the lower right. And you'll notice that I have a nightlight feature. What this allows me to do is put on a much more restrictive coloring on the system for when I'm using this at night. And I have found this a lot less strain, strenuous on my eyes when I'm typing and I'm working on my computer in the evening when the room is a little darker. So the night light is one of the features that came out, I believe in the spring creators update. The registry editor that many technical folks have used before, regedit, regedit, has also gone through some changes. And most notably, if you notice as I dig through the registry, so I'll go to HK Local Machine Software Microsoft. Maybe from there I go to the Windows directory. Current version. And maybe I'm looking for programs that run. You'll notice up here. I actually have that path that I can now save and use this to directly change where I am in the registry. So just by typing in that path at the top and hitting enter, I have now done the same thing that I had to drill down in the past to get to a particular location within the re local registry. Virtual touchpad is another thing that I can add to Windows 10 devices. This would probably be used in a situation with a tablet device, like a Surface, if I didn't have my keyboard and mouse, mouse attached. What it allows me to do is put up a virtual touchpad that exists on the screen. And again, why would you need this? Why? What would be a, a situation where I need to be able to move my mouse or my pointer and maybe click and right click on things from the screen as opposed to a physical touchpad. If I had my Surface, and again, I don't have attached my Surface keyboard with the touchpad built in, maybe I have a secondary screen that I'm giving this presentation from. And what I want to do is to be able to right click somewhere on the screen to get to an advanced function like zooming in on the screen or setting up all my slides so I can view them on the screen. This is what that virtual touchpad would be good for. I have a physical touchpad because I still have attached my Surface keyboard. That is one of the scenarios though for the virtual touchpad. There have also been improvements in Internet Explorer 11 and Edge in the creator's update. So here I will bring up the Bing homepage in Internet Explorer 11. What you'll notice is a very easy way now for me to discover there is another browser included in Windows 10. On my tab area, there's actually now a link to open Microsoft Edge. So that if I wasn't aware of this other browser that is available, it's very easy for me now to discover, hey, I have another browser on my system that I can use for Bing, whatever, 
websites I want to go to. Let's say that I'm using Bing, I'm using Twitter, and I've also got a page open on uh, Netflix. So I have these three tabs, and this is more of a personal use case, right? I've got video streaming, and I've got my Twitter feed open, and I'm maybe searching. I have the ability up in the upper left-hand corner now to actually set aside tabs that I've used. And those tabs all get set aside, giving me the ability maybe to go to a corporate page searching for Microsoft Windows 10 information. So now I'm off on the Microsoft site, I'm doing some work. I've got other websites open, maybe Netcom Learning, other sites for work. And now it's time to return to kind of those, those personal use cases of Facebook, Twitter, Netflix, whatever it is. I can actually go to the tabs I set aside and restore those tabs. Now I've got those three tabs included back in Edge without having to reopen them or reposition them. It's Bing, Twitter, and Netflix on my system. You also have some enhancements to the start menu that are available within the creator's update. And really the Windows 10 start menu is the best of Windows 7 capabilities and Windows 8 capabilities of pinning applications. But it now also includes the ability to categorize these into sections. So I can actually take something like the browser and make the store and the browser something that share a tile with each other, maybe Skype, and I'm just dragging and dropping these into the category explore, weather, and then we'll do news. You can see what this is doing and that's making my start menu much more usable from a standpoint of the real estate that's taken up. Another thing coming with the fall creators update is the ability to dynamically and diagonally change the start menu size. So I can decide what a start menu looks like for the device I'm using and the amount of pinned applications or items that I have on that. Some other areas of Windows 10 that are changing is the inclusion of what Microsoft is calling Microsoft 365. We talked about some of the advanced security protection in Windows 10. There's also a lot of work that Microsoft is doing in Office 365 to protect your information. It's also designed for modern IT. So when we look at deployment for business use cases, there are a number of areas that were a focus for Windows 10. And then it's meant to be more productive and give you different experiences on new different devices. We'll look at a couple of these examples now. From a security perspective, Windows 10 is designed to be the end of passwords as we have used them in the past. On the device I'm logged into, I have a surface type cover with an integrated fingerprint reader. So if I go to change my settings, and I look at my sign-in options on Windows 10, because I have that capability, 
you'll notice I have fingerprint as one of the options besides a PIN to log into Windows. A PIN is better than a password because then again, if a device or a intruder is looking at, maybe looking over my shoulder to see how I'm logging in, I'm not giving away my password as part of what they're observing. I may only be giving away my PIN used to unlock a particular device. Fingerprint even better than a pin because then there's nothing really to observe. I'm using my fingerprint as the way to log in. Windows Hello for Business allows you instead of using a fingerprint, just to have Windows devices observe your facial characteristics with both a webcam and an infrared cam that can sense depth and temperature and other things related to you and allows you to log in just by looking at your screen. Some of the productivity enhancements, we looked at the starting up websites from where you were. And again, that resume from different devices, there are a lot of use cases that Microsoft is looking at to make you more productive, not only on a Windows 10 device, but maybe on other devices that you have in mobile and tablet use cases along with Windows 10. There are also a number of devices running Windows 10, and these are anything from the HoloLens that you can see this person wearing in the video in the uh, PowerPoint to devices running a version of Windows 10 designed for workstations. Microsoft announced a particular version of Windows 10 for workstations, which supports more than two physical CPUs, much more memory than Windows 10 was designed as a client operating system to. And it's also designed to support and work with devices and hardware that we would typically find in server side use cases. So instead of having to run the server operating system, Windows 10 for workstations will have support for those graphic cards or maybe mass storage devices for disk arrays that you would use in maybe film production use cases or CAD, CAM type use cases. It's also designed for modern IT. We talked about some of the use cases where Windows 10 will be designed to be very easy for IT departments to roll out to systems. One of the changes here will be the ability to actually upgrade a Windows device from a Windows 10 Pro license and image to a Windows 10 Enterprise image very quickly and easily. You can also take Windows 10 and apply device management concepts that were typically used for mobile devices. And Microsoft Intune is Microsoft's management platform in that space. And here is just a couple of the security features that are included with Windows 10. We talked about Microsoft Edge. Microsoft Edge by default can now inform you if a site is using Adobe Flash content and actually give you a much more granular control about Flash and when it is enabled on a website. We didn't talk about BitLocker, but BitLocker is one of the capabilities from a encryption perspective encrypting your hard drive and its contents. And there are a number of other capabilities that again, Netcom classes covering Windows 10 would go into more detail on. And the other reason for Microsoft changing the release cadence of Windows 10 can be shown here from a Windows release timeframe and the threat sophistication that has been observed over time. In the past, 
Microsoft's longer release cycles, typically two to three years between operating systems, meant that attackers could potentially look for vulnerabilities or issues for a much longer time frame if systems were left unpatched. Now with a much tighter release cadence, the idea is that Windows can adapt and protect against those different situations that are being found in the industry. If you are tasked with preparing for Windows 10 as a deployment, Microsoft has a number of services and websites capabilities for you to prepare for a Windows 10 rollout. If you're using Microsoft System Center Configuration Manager or Microsoft Intune, you might have some of the information from a compatibility perspective or a hardware perspective, but there is a website readyforwindows.com that provides you compatibility information about both your ISVs and your applications that you're using with Windows today. There is also a tool used in Microsoft's Azure platform, and this allows you to look for the analytics in preparation of a upgrade to Windows 10. How ready are you for Windows 10 on the hardware devices that you're using? So it can give you feedback from Windows 7 and 8.1. It allows you to identify app and driver issues that you might have or face, the remediation of those issues, and then again, that can hopefully speed up your adoption of Windows 10 within your environment. Thanks so much. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Thank you so much, Dan. That was very informative. We will get to those questions in a few minutes, but we just want to remind our attendees that Netcom Learning does offer a comprehensive portfolio for Windows 10 training options. You can check all those out on your screen. So uh, check those out and uh, apply for them and enhance your skills. Technical skills are necessary to empower your career, but do you need to improve or upgrade your leadership skills as well to accelerate your career along with your technical abilities develop the skills you need to manage yourself others and business better welcome to Sarter learning a collaborative knowledge platform bringing the world's best business and leadership insights from fortune 1000 leaders best-selling authors and Ivy League professors Further, if you are interested in learning from the top American leaders, please log on to the e-learning platform, SarterLearning.com, and you can avail the special promotion meant for first-time users. Use the coupon code SARTER10 and begin your leadership journey right now. Now we are going to launch a quick poll to find out how many people might be interested in taking some additional training. So just take a few minutes to fill that out before you all log off. In addition, we have a lot more informative webinars coming up, and you can go to netcomlearning.com backslash webinars in order to register. And don't forget to like and follow us on our social media pages to get the latest technology updates. You can work, refer to our GoToWebinar chat. LinkedIn, Google, uh, etc., which you can see right there up on your screen. And now, Dan, let's get to some of those questions. First one is from Bill. He would like to know, um, he has a question about apps and how they update. The updates seem to come from the App Store. So how do you do this through WSUS? That's a great question. WSUS, or Windows Software Update Services, does allow certain types of application updates. But the applications that are done through the Windows Store or universal applications, those updates typically come from the Windows Store itself. It really depends on your deployment model. In a business environment, one of the things that Windows 10 has introduced 
is the idea of a Windows Store for business. So the way to control those from a business perspective is to deploy them from the Windows Store for business or something like Windows, or sorry, System Center Configuration Manager. Either one of those would be ways to control the updates and when people are getting those updates and maybe making sure that you've tested an update before it ends up on an end user's device. Great question, Bill. Okay, Chris would like to know, what if the iPhone is married to another machine via iTunes? So I'm assuming that question is in relation to either the continue on your PC or the resume or the, the device lock, the dynamic lock features. I have my iPhone paired with a different device for use with iTunes than I have here. I have not tried to pair the same iPhone to multiple Windows 10 devices, but I believe because it's just Bluetooth pairing and that does allow you to have multiple devices that you're paired to, it should work. What I haven't tested and would be interesting is if I'm paired to potentially two Windows devices, is it just the device that has the active connection that dynamically locks or that the device continues on? The continue on this PC feature looked like it scans for multiple devices. So I'd assume if I had like a laptop and a desktop, continue on my PC would give me the option of, do you wanna start on the laptop or the desktop? And then would present that web page on the appropriate device. Okay, we just have an additional add-on question from uh, Bill's first question about going to the App Store through WSUS and your response you want to know, is that an add-on that you talked about for WSUS? It's not necessarily a WSUS function. I don't believe WSUS handles universal apps. I believe those are handled through Windows Store for Business or Configuration Manager. Windows, Microsoft Intune would be another place to potentially handle those. But I don't okay, be believe the universal apps are part of it. Okay, next question is from L. Uh, you mentioned Windows 10S. What systems come with this version? Great question. Windows 10S is a version that comes with Windows devices like the Microsoft Surface laptop, the latest version of the Microsoft Surface Pro, and other types of devices from OEMs may ship with Windows 10 S. Windows 10 S is a version of Windows, when we talked about the security, that only runs applications that are either part of Windows 10 or that are universal apps. So for instance, PowerShell, or executables, executables that you would get from the internet would not run on Windows 10 S. If your device shipped with Windows 10 S and that's the version that you're using, you can actually change it so that it's running Windows 10 Pro and then those applications or capabilities are added to your device. But once you switch from Windows 10 S to Windows 10 Pro, it's a one-way switch. You can't switch back in the future. Okay, Muhammad would like to know, what are the best hardware requirements for Windows? There is a Windows 10 hardware requirement website. I haven't used that recently, but the best requirement information I've seen is that Windows 10 does support both 64 and 32-bit versions of hardware. 32-bit versions of hardware, some of the security features that we referenced may not be available for the 32-bit version of Windows 10. The place that Windows 10 32-bit would be used is maybe in IoT, Internet of Things implementations, or in smaller, uh, lightweight tablet devices for instance, those might be where you would still find 32-bit hardware today. You can get away with one gigabyte of RAM, but the more RAM you add to a Windows device, the better it performs. Hard disk 
the minimums I just pulled up here are 16 gig for 32 bit and 20 gig for 64 bit OSs. That's another reason that many tablets, especially with minimal amounts of disk space or solid Windows 10, it's a smaller footprint on the actual disk or solid state device. Okay, Ben would like to know, what version of PowerShell comes with Windows 10 Fall Creators Update? Let me check real quick. I'm gonna use dollar sign PS version table to check on my system. And it looks like it's uh, 5.1 as a version of PowerShell that's included. And it looks like it's aware of the build number too, the build of the operating system. Okay, we have one more question here, unless some more come in. Anything else for Windows 10 coming in the near future? I believe the Windows Insider site has some public information about a upcoming bill. Let me check real quick here. That whole skip ahead discussion we had with the Windows insiders is the idea of being able to look at what's coming in the future. So if you're interested, the Windows Insider blog would be one place to look for information. And then the other area would be the skip ahead feature of the Windows Insider settings in Windows 10. Okay, Dan, so any other final thoughts or insights before we end today's session? Tracy, I think you provided some of the course numbers and upcoming courses that are running with Windows 10. That would be a great way to further your knowledge of Windows 10. And thanks for attending. all of the, our attendees for joining us today. If you do come up with any additional questions, feel free to send them to webinar at netcomlearning.com at any time. We hope that you found today's webinar informative and we look forward to seeing you back here with us soon. Feel free to tell your friends and colleagues about our webinars and other courses. Have a great day, everyone.